Hey there, folks. Hope you're doing well today. Wanted to make a video regarding the debate. I was on a plane during the debate, so I wasn't able to live stream it, but I was pleasantly surprised to see a lot of people around me watching the debate, right? We want people to be in and out so they can make an educated decision when it comes November. Going to be talking about two articles today. First one is from NPR. Let's dive right into it. The debate between Harris and Trump wasn't even close and four other takeaways. Well, that was different than the June 27th debate between President Biden and Donald Trump. And if that June debate was a five alarm fire for Democrats that eventually forced Biden from the race after Tuesday's debate between Trump and soon to be Madam President Harris, Trump's proponents should probably check the temperature in their own house. What happened and what could it mean going forward? Number one, the debate wasn't even close. The majority of the focus coming in Tuesday was about how Harris would handle her first ever presidential debate with someone who has been on this stage many times. Could she answer the questions about her positions, parry the attacks from Trump, someone who tries to be the alpha on these stages? Could she answer the attack that she's light on policy and could she appear presidential? And, and I think she did all those things, right? I, I really liked the way she stayed on topic she stayed on the attack. She, she would circle back to points she made previously. There was no rambling. Her ideas were very well organized, clear and concise. You couldn't say that for him. She may have seemed nervous at first, but she quickly found her voice. All those questions were quickly dispatched. She explained her shift on fracking. My position is that we've got to invest in diverse sources of energy, so reduce, we reduce our alliance on foreign oil. Harris was far more dominant than Trump from the beginning to the end. She called him weak and wrong, inverting the political cliche that strong and wrong beats weak and right. Harris answered the question, then redirect and baited him on a host of issues. I love that she got under his skin, right? Something she usually tries to do. And she did this by saying people leave his rallies early out of exhaustion and boredom. Painting him as an out-of-touch bad businessman for inheriting $400 million on a silver platter and then filing for bankruptcy six times. I mean, this is points that I make all the time fast. And then she went on to, you know, saying that he was fired by 81 million people, which is a very true statement in the 2020 election, now being confused about losing. Uh, I also love that they asked him about uh, if he lost the election since he recently him he was such a oh man the, the way he had to spin it it was so entertaining. Harris addressed policy including tax breaks for small businesses and parents touting her idea for a first time home buyer credit for payment. She repeatedly said, "I have a plan." While Trump was left saying, "I have concept." <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. And then you know. And, this is they mentioned here uh, when it comes to replacing the Affordable Care Act. It really put him on display for showing, you know, how he had zero plans. And on the presidential question, Harris was calm in command and in control and looked to the future, distinguishing herself from both Biden and Trump, right? And I said that she had very well organized ideas, very clear and concise. Trump's team ahead of the debate equated the Republican standard bearer to the boxing great Muhammad Ali. If he was a boxer, Trump was cut and bleeding. He couldn't rule the fight. And by the end, he was TKO, or, or, uh, or as a Democrat strategist texted afterward, he was more like Ali versus Burbick. Ali's last fight decidedly unanimously for Burbick. Trump made you know, the unusual move for presidential candidate to go into the spin room after the debate to talk to reporters. That's not something that's normally done when someone has a good debate. That's usually reserved for low polling primary candidates who felt they didn't get enough time or attention during the debate. And I mean, that is definitely Donald Trump, right? He needs that attention. So uh, let's take a look and see what the other takeaways were. Here's number two. The spotlight should now be on Trump's incoherence and general lack of any serious grasp of policy. It's, it's so true. Um, you know, they questioned him on um, passing on that border plan or encouraging people to, encouraging the Republicans to pass on the border plan. And he skipped right over it and instead just started, you know, rambling on about, you know, immigrants eating cats and dogs. It was just, it was ridiculous. You know, it's very sad to see that neither the, uh, the people hosting the debate nor Madam President Harris um, circled back and, and tried to get him to actually answer that question. But I think that's, you know, my job now in, in the coming weeks is to pick that apart and really apply the pressure, make content around all of the things he did very weak there.
Uh, number three, Trump was on the defensive and evasive, even on issues that should have benefited him. And they do and much, if anything, that's the, it's true. Uh, you know, everyone said they wanted him to stick to policy, right? And I mean, if we're talking about, you know, crazy conspiracy theories about people eating pets, I don't think that's on policy, you know? So, um, and again, she did a very good job of, of sticking and moving in. And, you know, the left jabs that really hit and resonated for him around, you know, people leaving his rally early, him being, you know, uh, fired by 81 million people, him being a very bad businessman, right? I mean, you could even go further, right? Him being a felon, him being convicted of sexual assault, him from porn stars. I mean, this should be a very easy opponent for us. Let's finish this, right? Uh, the moderators fact-checked unlike in the previous debate, which is a good thing. Uh, again, I think they needed to push back even a little bit more. Harris has done everything right and could still lose. Harris arguably handled the Trump handled Trump better than anyone has at a debate, whether it was Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden, even though most concluded that Clinton and Biden won most, if not all of those face-offs. Since getting into this shortened campaign, Harris has done pretty much everything right. She's tacked to the middle, raised more than half a billion dollars, staffed up and opened field offices across swing states, fired up Democratic bases, and even now outdebated Trump. But the political reality is Harris could still lose. Trump has a strong and devoted base. And the seven swing states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada, are more conservative than the country at large. People still are more pessimistic than optimistic on the economy, even if that's improved some lately. And polls, including NPR and PBS, out Tuesday show people trust Trump to handle the economy, immigration, and war in the Middle East better than Harris. Uh, this is just insane that so many people are still so conned by this con artist, right? To think that he knows the economy, you know, again, he, he went bankrupt six times. He leveraged every law he could to, to benefit himself and exploit the system. And they want to put that guy in charge of the system. Oh, mind-blowing. Could this debate have changed some minds? Maybe. But views of Trump's have been ingrained. This race is very much a coin flip according to the polls, and that's unlikely to change very much after this debate because of this of how high, hyper-polarized this country is. And this is a good reminder for us folks, right? This is far from over. We need to get out and vote. We need to change minds and win hearts. And, and that's what I'm doing. That's what a lot of you are out there doing. I have friends who are out there uh, going door to door in Pennsylvania and, and having real conversations with real people. And, you know, talking about all the things that we talk about on this channel. And, and I'd ask you to, to do the same with your friends and loved ones who, who are on the fence. Now, while that might have been not the news you wanted to hear, here's some really good news um, that came right after the debate. Taylor Swift endorses Madam President Harris after the presidential debate and calls for calm, not chaos. The shake it off singer signed her post, childless cat lady, a clear reference to Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, controversial remarks. This is great news, folks. Taylor Swift has such an impact on so many young women. Um, this could really be the, the swing that we need. Global superstar Taylor Swift on Tuesday announced her support for Madam President Harris in a highly anticipated endorsement that could energize millions of so-called Swifties. The Fortnite singer endorsed the Democratic nominee in an Instagram post moments after Harris' first debate with Donald Trump wrapped up. And I think this is great, right? She really wanted to see what, what Harris, what Madam President Harris was going to speak about. And once she did, she, she was easily able to say, these are the ideas that I want my country to be about. And, and I mean, that's where I think that last article might be a little wrong, right? I think there might be other people who really wanted to hear uh, Harris's voice and see the contrast of the two voices, just as Taylor did. 
and then make up their decision. Like many of you, I watched the debate tonight in Swift Row. If you haven't already, now's a great time to do your research on the issues at hand and the stances these candidates take on the topics that matter to you most. As a voter, I make sure to watch and read everything I can about their proposed policies and plans for this country. I will be casting my vote for Madam President Harris and Vice President Tim Walls in the 2024 election. I'm voting for Madam President Harris because she fights for the rights and causes I believe need a warrior to champion them. I think she is steady-handed, gifted leader, and I believe that we can accomplish so much more in this country if we are led by calm, not chaos. I was heartened and impressed by her selection of a running mate of Tim Walls, who has been standing for LGBTQ rights, IADF, and a woman's right to, to her own body for decades. I'd done my research and I'd made my choice. Your research is all yours to do and the choice is yours to make. I also want to say, especially to first time voters, remember that in order to vote, you have to be registered. I also find it much easier to vote early. I'll link where you can register and find early voting dates in my story. With love and hope, Taylor Swift, Childless Cat Lady. Well, I think that is incredibly powerful. I don't think we could have ever got a better endorsement than that. And I love that she follows it up with the encouragement and the direction to register to vote and to vote early. We can do this, folks. We can be an underdog who overcomes. Let's show them they messed with the wrong underdogs. Oh!